Incredible. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, guys. Wherever you are, it's Thursday and I'm like 45 minutes late, an hour late nearly. Uh, to streaming, so I apologise for that. Um, I I I had some issues with my PC. Uh, for those of you who follow on Instagram, you'll have seen that my PC decided to die. Um, I thought it was malware at first. I thought it was like a virus because I was turning it on and just everything was crawling. And I mean, it was so slow. Applications were failing. It wouldn't allow me to click on settings. It wouldn't allow me to control any of the stuff that the PC controls here. Um, so it was a little bit of a nightmare. It was a little bit of a nightmare. Uh, I thought it might have been malware, yeah, Zizora. It turns out, it turns out that when I started to take a look at the PC itself, it was actually hardware related. So um, yesterday I, I bought a new Magewell capture card for streaming um, and it came this morning. Um, but yesterday, what I was doing is I had a look at this PC because I'm in two minds as to whether I buy a new PC or not for streaming on. And I was looking at this PC to see if it had the requisite slot for uh, the capture card. So I just turned the PC and turned it back. Literally just moved the tower, turned the tower maybe 45 degrees so I could have a look in the window and see. Um, it turns out I do have a slot. It's got a it's got a current capture card in there which is controlling the overhead cam and the new capture card can replace that and it means I can have a couple more cameras plugged in because the Magewell does four HDMI uh, 4K 60 Hertz inputs, which is great, perfect for streaming. Um, and then I'd moved the PC back and I'd gone home and I came back today and I turned the PC on and it was just slow. And I mean, it was so slow, like, like trying to click to open up Chrome took 11 minutes and it's like, what's going on here and then the mouse wouldn't move and of course all the other things are happening and then apps were just closing down and then I got it like a black screen with a grey box on it and nothing else so anyway turned the PC off turned it off the wall unplugged everything as you do um, and thought I'd just have a look at it and plugged it back in turned it on and I realized there was no noise coming from the front fans and inside the case I have here it's just to the side um, the AIR cooler is kind of like um, it, it's kind of like on the top um, and there's two fans above it and those fans um, usually are spinning but very low speed and there is a there is a, a high to low speed controller for those fans and it's always on low because I never put anything taxing through the PC I rarely play games on it or anything else um, and it turns out that those fans weren't spinning when I pressed the power button. I thought well, that's unusual. So I was then playing with the the kind of control for the fan speed, and it turns out whatever controller allows it to have a range that it must be a potentiometer in there that has allows it to have a range of fan speeds no longer works. So the PC only works now because it wasn't getting cool. So the pump wasn't moving around, I assume as well. And the the pump wasn't moving the the water around, and the uh, the fans weren't spinning to keep it cool. Whatever. Um, it now only works if I slap that potentiometer the, the the sliding thing all the way to high so it's fullest setting and i can feel it working i can feel it um actually the fans are actually doing something now and of course i can stream now because as soon as i turned the pc on after i'd done that everything sprang back to life it's protesting you thinking about other computers i the only thing i can think of is that it it must have like knocked something when I moved it and I didn't move it much I just literally turned it 45 degrees didn't stretch any cables or anything like that just so I could see in the side panel because I can't quite see in it from where I'm sat and yeah it was just one of those things it was bizarre it was the weirdest thing anyway I I think it's now cemented my decision that next month I'm just gonna buy a new PCB I'll have to wait until next month because it, like it's a business expense but it's a, a hefty chunk of finances um so yeah so the plan is to build a new streaming pc and then use the pc that we have downstairs in the office the pc that's here strip them both for parts build the best pc i can out of both replace the office pc for mal with the best parts of both um and then we should be good we should be good i think because yeah i don't even know what the specs of this pc are like if, if anyone knows how i can dig out all of the specs of the pc like the quickest and easiest way so i can show you guys what i'm working with here um i actually think that the machine downstairs is significantly more powerful um and i think i've got the shit one for, for the workshop for the office here and mel's got the good one but we'll we'll have a look at it anyway um so yeah 
Right. Okay. So let's catch it with uh, let's catch it with chat. Um, KB Babes was first today. Hello, man. Uh, Clownfish as well. Uh, Moons of Empire is here. Jelly Master Two. Top says PC fixed. I, I just covered that sort of. It is. Um, I think basically the if I do not if I decide not to get a new PC, I think what I'm going to have to do is. Um, uh, change over the potentiometer in this, like uh, not change the the AO in this, the all-in-one cooling. I'm gonna have to rip that out and put a new one in. I think that's that's the very least I'm gonna have to do. So I'm gonna order one. I've got one in my Amazon basket that's the same model as this. So I'm gonna order that anyway, just in case, um, and we'll see. Uh, as if we get to a customer build, I did put up a, a poll, like not a poll, but like a bit of a prediction, so you guys can see if we get to one or not. Um, you ask too many questions, you do, but I like the questions. I like interacting with you guys. It's good. Uh, you should get some coffee yourself. Yeah, I can recommend a really good store. You might want to check out Jay's Roastery, our new company. Um, so it is. Uh, it's up there. Snicket, hey man, good to see you. Cornflakes as well. Um, Charter Music's here too. Maybe yes, hello. Storzner says, uh, good afternoon. Hey man, good to see you. Congratulations, you now own the world's most expensive space here. Yeah, something like that. Um... I mean, like, it's only heating, like, a really small space as well. That's the downside. But it's working now, so I think I, I don't think it's done any major damage. I, I, I think the pump must have been working. It's just that the fans weren't working because of the potentiometer. Um, I think the pump just works no matter what fan setting you put it on, um, the more I think about it. So it must have just not been cooling it quick enough. Um, anyway, it's working now. It's fine. The PC's running probably better than it has done in a long time, so... Um, Jay's nails blinding us. Yeah, so um, this morning I went I went for a manicure. Look at this, the sparkly nails. Um, I went for a manicure and pedicure. I've never had my nails professionally done before, and it was quite an experience. They've just put a clear coat on. It's very shiny, and um, I've already chipped it because, well, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's like a big chip in the front of it. Um, but they were looking great for a while. But I have such. I, I have to do so many manual things that uh, putting the bins back today I had uh, like it's our refuse day collection day so I had to put the bins back as soon as I got back and chipped it yes um so I have a ducky mini and I got a cherry MX red switches had a baby and now I regret getting switches that allowed best recommendation for silent switches um we don't actually have any on the store right now silent switches um we are going to be stocking some soon the, I, if you're bored hot swap though there are plenty of silent switches out there um, if you're in the UK which is where we're based Mechboards has a whole range they probably have a ton of switches we're in the process of kind of like having a really curated selection of switches so I'm trying to sell out what we've got and I've got a load of switches here that aren't in stock yet um, because I want to put out a curated collection and have everything here. If you're in the US, um, I can recommend Novel Keys. Um, they, we work with Novel Keys quite a lot. We work with um, Canon Keys quite a lot. They're really good brands. They both have a lot of switches. Novel Keys probably has more switches available. Um, so yeah, definitely check those out. And I think actually uh, Canon Keys has the... If we had them in stock still, the switches I would have recommended. Um, I've forgotten the name of them. Let me Let me see if I can find them. But we, we, we ordered them at the same time as Canon Keys, so they might have themselves silent switch. What was it called? Uh, coral switches. Uh, coral as in the underwater plant, C-O-R-A-L. Um, you might find some of those coral switches in stock at uh, Canon Keys, which are really, really good. And uh, Andrew, who runs Canon Keys, great guy. Great guy. So, yeah, definitely take a look at that. Um, right, okay, so test manager, yeah, so test manager actually was really weird, so test manager showed that the CPU was at like 20% load or whatever, or something like that at maximum, so it wasn't the CPU load, but it didn't show temperature on there, what it did show that the RAM was maxing out, which was weird, and I suspect that's just because all the programs on the start menu, because everything, because I'm stupid, I have everything set to load as soon as I turn the PC on for convenience, um, I suspect the RAM was just maxing out because it wasn't able to flick through everything as quick as it usually does because of the processor issues. <clears throat> Hit Windows, then go to my PC. Oh, okay. Um, hold on, Windows. My PC. This is where you can all... Wait, what? I don't want to load that. That's loading mail. Press the Windows key. There is no my PC on there. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. No. Is it in settings somewhere? System. Must be in here, right? 
Must be in here. I don't know. I don't know. I'll come back to that. If you can give me really specific instructions, let's see. I'll have a look. But I'm terrible at this kind of stuff. Uh, it's a weekday stream that I've somehow caught. Nice, Ergo. Thanks very much for being here. <clears throat> in the thousands for a GPU. Yeah. Uh, perfect timing. The other stream I was watching just finished. Nice, nice. What are the chances of getting a car for Kahaku if you get rubber hose? Uh, so if you buy if you buy um, Jim K rubber hose from us, then you will get a chance to buy uh, a guaranteed chance to buy either a Jane or a Kahaku that matches the rubber hose key set that complements it. Sorry, um, if you buy two base kits, you'll be able to buy both keyboards. So you'll if you buy one base set, you'll be able to buy one of the two keyboards. You can pick and choose which one. Or if you buy two base sets, you'll be able to buy both keyboards. So there you go. That's how it works. Cornflake. Uh, we ship worldwide, so and there's no region lock anymore, so you can buy from us if you want. If you're on Intel, your max heat is absurd, so you should be fine. The Intel chips thermal throttle hard. I think that might be what was happening. I really don't know what I was on here. Um, but I, like, I, I pressed the Windows key, and I do not have a My PC option in there. Like, it just doesn't show that. Uh, is it going to be there? Yeah, it's not finding it. Oh, I can scroll through them. Okay, maybe if I scroll through these. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back to it. You'll, I'll find it in chat when you guys tell me to. Right? Um, auto W, not a raffle. Yeah, it's not a raffle at all. Yeah, you get to buy it. Getting nails done is honestly such a strict treat. I should do it more often. My feet feel fantastic. They kind of sanded off all the dead skin and stuff. It was really nice. Corals are great. Yeah, they're great. Can we expect any video content from you soon? So I've been thinking about doing some video content. Um, I was going to do some like three or four years ago with Brian on Top Clack. And we were going to do a series called Just the Tip. Uh, where we gave like a load of keyboard tips. And I kind of think I want to do that and bring it back. So just do like just little things. Maybe short form content. Reels. That kind of stuff. Uh, YouTube shorts. Just showing people how to lubricate stabilizers. Uh, lubricate switches. How to install a hot swap socket. Uh, like a switch into a socket. That kind of stuff. Just the real basics. Um, and I want to kind of do like a stream. Where we just go right back to basics. And we pretend I'm a noob. And I get like, I don't know, like a Zoom 75 off the shelf and I build it completely from scratch. And I show people every single step that you need to learn and show them how to follow like the build guides and all kind of go through jargon and all of that kind of stuff. Is there a coupon off in this live stream? Uh, if you do exclamation mark discount, you will find out. Rodok, hey man, good, good to see you. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks for the support. Yeah, did Mel reach out to you yesterday, I think? Um, Mel, who works for me. We're supposed to be sending you a package. Manu, hey man, good to see you. Um, I need to sort out WeChat, I know. Looking for suggestions for keycaps for the green Neo 80. I don't want to go the standard GMK Botanical. I was thinking EPBT4 for some color pop, maybe. Tasty, Love your tasty. shop. Kind regards from Germany. Uh, Fergath, dude, like EPBT4 on a green Neo 80, that will slap. That will slap so hard. Um, do it, dude. Like, do it. Like, I would generally personally go with beige on green because I think it looks great. So I would have gone for like Retro 100 or something like that. But. EPBT fall, those bright colors, that'll work really, really well. Windows plus pause break will bring up system properties. Right, okay, so Windows and pause break. Um, hey, that, that worked. Okay, right, okay. So I will read you my system. In fact, do you know what? I can probably just show you. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me do this and show you it properly. Um, let's flick over to the other camera and I'll put it, I'll put it, I'll put it here, in, like up here for you somewhere in a second. Um, and you can you can you can uh, verbally abuse me for how terrible this uh, this PC is. I know it's lacking your RAM. Like let's uh, let's see if we can if we can do this. Add source, add a new source. Um, add source. Let's see. Um. interesting i can't i can't share that because the window doesn't show as a as an option interesting okay i might have to do like a screen share instead let's let's try this again um let's try doing display capture oh actually actually uh yeah okay yeah i, I, I will try, try that display capture Add source, 
Um, add source. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm going to try and make this like I'm just going to share the relevant part of my screen because this is like the quickest way I can do it. Okay, so uh, let's try and make the right bit there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's try and make it as big as possible. I do that. So there we go. So we've got um, an AMD Ryzen 5. Oh, I don't like that. Why is it doing that? Oh, it's because I've clicked on it and everything. Like, right, AMD Ryzen 5 uh, processor, 16 gig of RAM, which is not enough for a streaming PC. Um, so there you go. That's what we have. This I bought this from CCL Computers, like as a pre-built a few years ago. Um, so yeah, that's what we have. Yeah. I uh, I definitely need to upgrade this PC. I'm sure, but like I'm sure when I bought, hold on, I'm going to check this because Mel did some changing around of this system. She she started taking parts out of the computer and putting other parts in a while back because the graphics card that I wanted to use in uh, this PC, I tried to upgrade the graphics card at some point, didn't fit, so we had to put another one in it. I think I bought this with 32 gig of RAM, and I think I think because there's only one RAM stick in there right now. I'm sure. Um, yeah. But it's basically I, I need to I need to do it yeah <laughs> I I think I just need to get a new PC let's put it that way okay <clears throat> okay let's get rid of that and go back to the stream right okay so what else are we talking about then um all my 65 percent homies being the FOMO for not having that key hey dude I'm on a TKL so it's fine I had it today. I had to ask Jay for a coupon. <laughs> yeah, you have to ask me for a stream discount. Um, so it depends on what you want to discount on. Um, sometimes we do do stream discounts for specific items. Uh, there isn't anything particular that we um, um, that we have a discount on right now. But if there's something in particular, just tell me what you want a discount on. It won't be on like every product, but if there's a particular product and I can do it, I will. We'll see. Skill issue. Yeah. Plug and play, baby. I saw Destiny. Do you play Destiny? I do. Yeah, very rarely. I haven't played since the last expansion, um, but I do play Destiny, and I love Destiny. It's. Um, I, I wish I had more time to play. So yeah, uh, you can probably get away with 16 gigabyte more RAM for another year or so. Yeah, like this PC's been fine for years. Um, I'm sh like I'm gonna check my emails. Um, uh, Gmail. I'm gonna I'm gonna see how much RAM I bought with this CCL CCL order. Let's let's have a look. When did I buy this computer? I bought this computer. I bought this computer in March 2021. So it's three years old. So it's getting on. So here's here's the full spec. I should have just done this before because this is way easier. Um. Uh, micro Windows Home, yeah, I should have bought Pro, but we'll we'll sort that out when we get a new one. Um, a 650 uh, uh, PSU, uh, 512 gigabyte M2 SSD, uh, an MSI B450 Pro Max AMD AM4 socket motherboard. Um, okay, so this is where it says two times 16 gigabytes of D10. RAM from A Data AP APG Gamix 3200 megahertz DDR4. So this machine did have 32 gigabits of RAM, um, and then it's case, and then it's got the Ryzen 5 3600, um, and then it's got a 3090 in it uh, gigabyte GeForce RTX 3090 gaming 12 gigabytes OC GPU. So there you go. That's that's the spec that I ordered. Um, that's the spec that I bought. So it did have more more RAM in it at one point. <clears throat> for multiple Jim K group buy joining, you can't have a discount on group buys. Like that's just not possible. Like a group buy. So how it works is group buy is you getting it at a discount already. The group buy price is cheaper than the 
in stock price. So group by price is here and you pay less because you have to wait for your product. And then in pre-order, which is when we've paid for manufacturing, the price goes up a little bit because you just don't have to wait quite as long and it's already ordered. And then in stock is where it's set at the retail price. So we can't offer you a discount on a group buy. That's just not possible. In stock tasty, products tasty. we can have a look at. Uh, Ferragas, thank you so much for the sub, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, thoughts on GMK Daifuku? It's a great set. Great set. Anything that's kind of that color pinky is, is, is great. Uh, it's still a decent system. Just upgrade the RAM and it lasts for several more years. Yeah, like I just feel like I need something new for streaming, man. Like I want to really do more streaming. Um, so Destiny uh, Nerd Moment, the new expansion basically changes everything. So I've, I've been reading this and I, I've been out of the loop for about 18 months on Destiny, something like that. And... Uh, in fact, the last time I did it, I did I played with Jelly, and Jelly dragged me kicking and screaming through the last raid. It was the, the the guy with the golden spinny thing on the room, and you had to jump up all the ledges and stuff like that to get to him. Um, and then, yeah, that was the that was the final boss, and it was like an outside bit where you had to shoot a thing that flew around. I can't really remember. Um, but the last the last expansion I really really played, where I played a lot. Um, was when they started to bring the legendary campaign uh, and i actually got to play that with some of the bungee devs because they bought some of my keyboards and stuff which was really really cool um so that was the one that was uh, it brought in a new location i can't remember what it was called it was all about zivu arath um and her trying to get like i think she got like uh, she she um managed to get a light from the traveler at the end or something like that or or that was kind of like my m memories of it so yeah, um, but Destiny I love. I, I do want to get back into it, but I feel like I've missed too much to come back to it now. PC has a ton of life left in it. Maybe, maybe. Three years isn't as old as it used to be these days. I'm not working, you working. <laughs> good luck for your GCSEs, man. Yeah, good luck. 3090, damn. Don't need to upgrade that then. Uh, so, afternoon, Jane. Chat, hope you're doing well. Sorry I'm late. No worries, Ungodly. No worries. Add another 16 gig of RAM and you're good. Okay, I'll, I'll consider that. I might just buy two new 16 gig of it, uh, two new 16 sticks of RAM because then I know what it's it's all matching and everything else. Mine is like six gigabyte and it's not enough. Yeah, so what I've been looking at because um, we do have another machine that I have at home that is built for rendering. It doesn't have a great graphics card and it's got one of these uh, workstation graphics cards in. But we've got um, we've got nice six gigabytes of RAM in that, and that's got an Intel i7 in it as well. Um, and that PC just blows my mind, um, and it works really, really great for rendering. But it's not really going to be a streaming PC or worthwhile to have on a desk here, and it's loud too. So, Blackbrook, hey man, good to see you. Ramp up the RAMs, yeah. What are you going to build today? I don't know. We'll get to it. I've got a custom build at the side of me. I can't remember what board it is, but we'll see if we can get there. Unless you're planning on gaming and streaming, then there isn't much other than a RAM upgrade will make a difference. Um, so I do want to do so start, start doing some gaming on stream. So we play marbles and stuff, which is fine, but I actually quite like to maybe play some Destiny and do like a prototype is plays kind of thing every couple of days. Um, so I want to make more time for myself. My, my biggest challenge in life is making time for myself. I work I'm a workaholic and I work to the point of having no time for me and as I get older that's something that I need to change because a lot of the work that I do doesn't necessarily have to be done or I could get someone else to do it or I could kind of combine it with something else or you know or I could automate it which is something I want to talk about today Matt Black, yeah. So the PC was originally bought. So what I read here, uh, I've taken it off there, was the, it was originally bought with a 3090. And I think what happened is I then wanted to fit the capture card for the cameras. Um, and I'm pretty sure Mel did that for me. And at the time, the 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 3090 wouldn't allow the capture card to fit in underneath it. There wasn't just wasn't enough space. So I'm pretty sure that what happened was Mel took the 3090 and put it in her PC for the, the, the office downstairs. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's in that and that I've got the 3060 that's out of that machine and I wonder if that's where the rest of the RAM went as well because there's only one stick in there so I'm wondering if that what's happened you want to install Destiny? yeah PC upgrade bug almost as bad as buying a new key bug yeah I haven't bought a PC in ages and I, I actually quite like the idea of building one the problem is with building one when it's a company owned PC is that it needs to have uptime and if it's a personal PC and it goes down you can buy another part and replace it and fix it but when it's the company asset 
it needs to be on an RMA kind of basis. Like if it fails, I just ring up the company and they send a replacement. That, you know, that's how it has to be. Um, I don't want to run a company and then just come into work and not be able to be productive because Mel needs the other PC and I need this one and this one doesn't work. You know, it has to be on that kind of basis. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of revision, trying not to burn out. The stream is helping a lot. Glad, man. So the, the, the key to revision is don't burn out. The key to revision is do it in 20 minute chunks. Um, I hated revision. And the, the way in which you learn should change how you revise. So revision isn't about going through everything. Don't go through everything. That's just, it's just not possible. Most people approach revision in a really wrong way. What they'll do is they'll look at the curriculum that they're supposed to know and they'll go, oh, I'll just read everything and try and refresh my memory. No, make an honest assessment. Look at your curriculum, make an honest assessment with yourself and say, point A, do I know that one? The, the, the overall topic, am I comfortable with most of that topic? If you're comfortable with 80% or more of that topic, move on until you find a topic that there's less than 80% that you're comfortable with. Okay, and then go through that topic and do the same exercise at a lower level of detail and say, okay, this this topic, you know, let, let's say I, you mentioned biology earlier on. I don't know what's in GCC biology these days, but let's say, I don't know, uh, one part of it was about uh, reproductive systems and another part about it was, you know, uh, photosynthesis or plants, plant life, you know, whatever it is. I can't, I don't know how the GCSEs go these days. Um, but, you know, so if, it, if it's about photosynthesis, right, go, do, do I know 80% of this this particular topic? And you go, yeah, okay, I think I do. Okay, so then uh, you take it that, uh, if, and then if you say no, and you say, actually, I don't know about 80% of this, look at it at a lower level of detail and say, right, okay, so there's five topics in here. There's, uh, there's bits about the mitochondria, there's bits about, you know, you know um, uh, how plankton do whatever they do. There's bits about, you know, how sunlight can change things in different environments and, you know, all of this kind of stuff, whatever it is. Look through those and think, do I know 80% about each? each of these and keep going down to that level and as soon as you find something that's less than 80% that you know about learn that just learn it do flashcards high level bullet points whatever you need to try and remember it um and then you come back out and use it on a step basis and think right what else do I know 80% of because the thing with the GCSE is you don't have to know everything same with any exam you don't have to get 100% and if you're not targeting 100% don't try try and target what you are comfortable with 80% will get you a great passing grade and you'll be able to focus on a much greater range of information than narrowly focusing your attention because most people will pick up a textbook and they will try and read every single page and it'll just go to mush you won't remember it so 20 minute chunks learn a specific thing take a break go for a walk go to the toilet get a drink whatever you need to do five minutes later come back for another 20 minutes do the same again and just learn it in little chunks little chunks keep going you got it big doing a lot of vision yeah engage from melodics melodics yeah prototype is plays would be great yeah i i don't play enough games and i miss them uh i'm surprised that a 5600 aio though seems like way too overkill yeah it's just what it came with it yeah jcc matsu received thanks no worries man if you buy something from the store, you get it. If one of the sticks of RAM was taken out, I'd definitely replace the current RAM with two sticks of higher capacity RAM instead. Yeah, I do want to do that. Um, just had a, the mitochondria is a powerhouse of this. Life. I really didn't want to say that, Alvin. I really didn't want to say it because it's such a cliche. Yeah. <clears throat> Pomodoro method for the win. Yeah, yeah. Pretty sure eighty percent gets you the highest grade these days, right? I I don't know. That was always how I revised. I based it on I need to get eighty percent as a passing grade. And do I know 80% of the topic? And if I do, great. I Then the, the other 20%, I, you know, it's not worth worrying about. It's a whole 80-20 rule. It, it works in a lot of aspects of life. And it's what I need to apply to my business stuff. Like, I can do 80% of the work here at PT. Um, you know, and don't have to worry about the other 20% because the business will still function. And I need to really rein that in on myself. Because a lot of the other stuff that I do will be tiny stuff. So, yeah. Get yourself a nice cold Pepsi Max. Yeah, man, do it. Do it. Go get yourself a Pepsi Max, and then is a grade nine, which is an A star star grade. Wait, what? <laughs> grade nine? We, we we had A star A all the way through to I don't know what it went down to actually. Um, I did my GCSEs in in ooh, in summer of two thousand and one. It had been June July two thousand and one when I did my GCSEs, so it's twenty three years ago. Um. Yeah, yeah, and I got, I got six A's, 
5A stars, a C and a D. Yeah. It's a long time ago now. Two thousand and one. Yeah, it's twenty three years since I left high school. Um, yeah, I was born in like nineteen eighty five, so I'm old. You can see the wrinkles look wrinkly. Don't disrespect us lecturers like that. Um, yeah, so I mean, my my experience of uni was very different because I did my MBA at Manchester um, very late on in life. So I did that in my early thirties through Lloyd's. Uh, they paid for me to do my MBA. So yeah. 80 20 values is weird. What do you mean? No, so, you, you, so if you do 80% of the work for like, a, so 80 20 works in a couple of different ways, and there's a few different ways you can apply this rule. So, um, 80% of like from a business 80% of your profit generally comes from 20% of your customers uh, or whatever it is that like you can apply this in different ways and it, it, it's it's a misnomer for a lot of things but like on average it's, it's a great thing um, and like you can use it for set targets like uh, if you're working a call center you might want to answer 80% of calls in 20 seconds or less um, and those are the 20% you kind of like work through in different ways so yeah like weird how often it comes up oh yeah, yeah it comes up a lot it comes up a lot it's like um, fee uh, if you want to look at fee PHI um the the magic number that's that comes up everywhere in 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 math and life and everything as well it's interesting how things circle around it born in 85 and feels old cough cough 78 dude yeah well i'm 14x so it is what it is it is what it is right okay so the first thing i wanted to talk about is um automation today so here at PT, um, I try, I'm trying to automate everything to make things, lives easy for the staff. So um, I can't show you some of the PT stuff because there's a lot of in-depth stuff there. But what I want to show you is some stuff that we're doing for Jay's Roastery, my new coffee company. And effectively, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to automate a lot of the accounting work. So if you guys have ever looked at a business and looked at the accountancy stuff, it's terrifying. There's VAT, there's taxes, there's um, it, it, there's like you have to do things twice a lot of the time. Dual record accounting is just the bizarrest thing in the world. Um, anyway, there's a whole raft of stuff to do. So what I want to try and do is I want to try and automate a lot of that. Now Shopify has a whole, we both work, Jay's Roastery and Prototype is work on Shopify backends. And Shopify does have a whole host of reports that you can pull, but none of them really work for a UK based company. There's just, there's just so many different rules that it doesn't work. So what I'm trying to do is automate a few things. What I wanted to do is whenever a sale happens, I want to output the detail on a spreadsheet. I don't want to have to download records of transactions. I want to put it out on a spreadsheet, give my accountant access to the spreadsheet, and then every month he can come in and go tick, 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 job done. So what I'm really building is the information my accountant needs without me needing to do anything, without me needing to download a report, transform the information, and then provide it to him. I'm trying to build that up from. So I've been looking at um, using Zapier uh, which is kind of like a, if you haven't seen this, it's basically if this, then that IFTTT on steroids. And it basically provides what they call zaps, which are small interactions when things happen. Um, and it provides like a plethora of different modules that you can plug in. So you can plug in Shopify, you can plug in Google Docs, you can plug in the Vesta board, which is great. It's one I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, and you can plug in all of these different attributes to try and show information in different ways and send information between applications without ever having to do any hard coding. So historically, you'd have had to get a developer in, the developer would write a custom series of code and that would transform your information from one thing to another thing and give you the output that you needed. On the fly, we can do something quite similar that's very, very easy and even a layman like me can understand it. So that's what I wanna talk about today. <clears throat> just hire Jimmy Carr's accountant yeah I'd like to pay my taxes properly are you guaranteed a Jane or Kahaku if you purchase rubber hose yeah if you buy one base kit from us you will get the opportunity to buy either a Jane 
or a Kahaku, whichever one you pick, it doesn't, it's up to you. If you buy two base kits, you'll be able to buy both boards from us. But you don't have to buy a board. If you do buy a base kit, there's no, I'm not going to come around and say, right, you must now buy a board. That's fine. Um, so yeah, so that's how it works. You can buy one or two base kits. You can buy 10 base kits if you want, but you can only get two keyboards maximum. And you can only have one Jane or one Kahaku, and you have to buy a base kit to access each one. That's how it works. Uh, we ship around the world, so you can order from us, and we will sell you the board wherever you live. Um, and we can ship the key set around the world as well. So yeah, there's no region lock on it anymore because some of the worldwide vendors have sold out. So yeah, that's absolutely available right now and you can go do it. Um, let's click over into the build stream one and I'm going to try and... What's this going to display if I make that visible? Hmm. Don't know what that is. Let's get rid of it. Is that going to make the right thing visible? Yeah, okay, cool. So this is Zapier that you can see here on, on the screen. Um, which is nice and bright. And you can see that uh, there's two folders here. There's Jay's Roastery and Prototypes Keyboards. I am not showing you the Prototypes Keyboards one today because there's too much in there that I can't show you. But on Jay's Roastery, um, I did want to show you some automation and how we're going to try and do things. Um, trust the corn, please. Trust the corn. You want a unicorn? <laughs> you know <what> I mean, Kahaku? <laughs> Um, so yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at Jay's Roastery and some of the automations I've set up here, or I'm trying to set up and trying to get some stuff out. Very excited for the coffee. Dude, the website's live right now. You can go to Jay's Roastery and you can buy it. It's, this is it. Like, this is the website. Jay'sRoastery.co.uk. It's very much early access. Um, there's a whole like change log at the bottom. So it does make it really, really clear here that it's early access and we're going to be updating some stuff. Uh, and this was a picture of a coffee I took last week uh, here at the workshop um, as well. Uh, this is actually the beans I'm drinking now being roasted. Uh, I went down to the company that's doing the roasting for us because I can't afford the roasting machines just yet. Um, and uh, these beans here, this is my personal badge that we roasted on the day of, uh, of the coffee I'm drinking right now. This is uh, Fiction Blend, so yeah. Um, but yeah, you can buy these right now. These are, these are live and on the store. You can buy the Classics Blend, the Fiction Blend, or the Sci-Fi Blend. Fiction is probably where I'd recommend most people start out. Um, again, the stuff like the CSS scripting I need to fix for this bit here to make it just look nice and stuff. It's all basically in early access right now. Um, there's details about the coffee itself. There is brewing notes as well, so you can see how to brew it for espresso and pour over as well. And then, of course, every order gets free shipping as well. So, yeah. Um, definitely take a look if you're interested. Three different coffees for now, three different blends, and we're working it. The overhead is insane, so hats off. Yeah, so we, we don't own the roastery. Uh, we're working with the local roasters, and we're buying in the beans. We're having them stored there. They're roasting the beans for us to our specification uh, and blending them together to our specification. And we've come up with these three coffees to start with, and I'm really, really proud of them. I'm really, really proud of them. So, yeah. So, yeah, coffee's live. You can go buy it. Um, and if you do buy it, the first thing that will happen is this is the first zap that I created. Now, zaps are basically like this is like um, the screen here is like a programming module. All you do is you add different things into this uh, to try and get outputs. So you can say, I want you to do this and you can add a step. And it's so easy. So we've had a step, first of all, for a new order in Shopify. Um, we link our account and then we can test it. It pulls back some test order data here. Um, so if we use that particular one, which is some test data, and we say, right, now we want to output it to Vesta board, which the Vesta board is like my kind of like train tracker thing type in. If you ever went to a uh, train board, uh, like a train station in the 80s, you'd have seen the big flicker boards that go chicka, 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 and all the things update. I have one of those in the workshop uh, made by a company called Vesta board. And then what we can do is we can output the information here to the Vesta board. So we then link our Vesta board account. Um, and we say we want it to take this action. So we want it to say on the on the best board, coffee nerd alert, certain customer, this is from the test information that we just looked at a second ago, the test account, and we can pull back a variable here. So this variable here, one is the customer's first name. So coffee nerd alert, uh, Josh, ooh, grammatical error, that should just be a lowercase J, just ordered. Uh, oh no, we're doing, mm, yeah, okay. That should be a lowercase L as well. Um, ordered and then what they ordered so this on this test data they've ordered the classic blend of coffee now the issue I've got here is it's not pulling through all of the details because I've selected line item name here um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of that particular one and we're gonna figure out 
uh, which line item part we need to come in. So of all of the different things in uh, Shopify, the different variables that are on a customer's order, which particular one do we want? So previously we had the name. Uh, we can have the variant title, but that's espresso whole beans. That's not going to tell us which one they've ordered. And we can have line items name, but that doesn't display and pass correctly on the best of board. So I think the one that we want is the line items title. Um, and that will then show us what particular one they've bought. So, yeah. So we're going to update this. We're going to pop some exclamation marks on the end because why not? And we're going to save it. And then we're going to publish it. Now, you won't be able to hear this, but the Vesta board should go off downstairs. Um, in fact, actually, let me see if on another browser I can just log into the Vesta board and show you this live. Uh, I think what I'll be able to do. How do I log in? Oh, I found a Vestibord simulator. There we go. Where's the login? Vestibord Plus, is this it? Hmm. What I was hoping to do was show you uh, the Vestibord because there's like a digital representation of it that I can uh, have in browser. Okay, that's taking me to a different place. I don't want that. Okay, interesting, interesting. Hey Caesar, thank you very much for being here. <clears throat> Every coffee I try is too sharp or acid for me, even when they say they aren't. Try packed and rave, all too acidic. At least if I try black espresso. Um, so the ones we have, are the, the, the fiction blend is designed to be like a house coffee at coffee shops, and it's actually for sale in some local coffee shops already as their house coffee. Um, so if you do want to try it, I, I would recommend that you go for the, the fiction, uh, the fiction blend. It's it's a pretty good coffee for a starter coffee. What's the best coffee I've had outside of the UK, Alvi? What a question is that to ask? Um. So the best coffee I've ever had outside of the UK would probably be would pr this is going to sound a bit silly, but it would probably be uh, a chain bakery that we went to in Copenhagen. Their house, what was it called? Um, let me see if I can find it actually. Um, in fact, I follow them on Instagram. Let me get let me have a look because I follow them on Instagram. They were so good. Um, It was like Emma's or Emile's or something like that. Copenhagen Bakery. It's like I say it's a chain. There's like three or four of them, I think. Um, let me see if I can find them. I know I follow them. Hold on. Let me let me look on my list of companies that I follow. Um, following. Let me see if I can find them. Ah, yeah, Emery's Boutique. Okay, cool. Uh, let me find this. Emery's Boutique. So. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. I got it. I can show you. Right, so this is, this is it. It was Emery's. Um, this was in Copenhagen, and we got recommended to go there for their um, their, their baked goods, and they were stunning. Um, I mean, you can tell from the website, it's just really, really nice food. Um, on their Instagram, they have a load of stuff, but they made such good coffee. Um, so they make all of these tarts and cakes and stuff like that, um, sandwiches and everything else. And it, honestly, it was just to die for. Um, and there was one about 50 yards away from the hotel that we were staying at, maybe 100 yards away. 
And we went there for breakfast pretty much every morning while I was there. But the coffee was just insane. It was so good. Um, they used, um, they had a single origin as their house coffee, which is really cool. Um, and it was just really, really nice. Like every day, like every time I went past, it was like, oh, I'm going to get another coffee. I'm going to get another. There was one day when I must have had eight coffees from there because it was just so good. Yeah, really, really good. Emery's. So yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> we're digressing now. Anyway, okay, so I can't show you the rest of the board, but effectively we now, we've now got our, our control here. We've just built it simply by adding some points here. And then we can go to test, and you won't be able to hear it. Um, but if I click on publish, what will happen is, uh, oh, we need to save it, this is V3. Um, what will happen is it will then flick that round on the rest of the board, and I'll hear it as well, go through in a second. Um, so yeah. So that's that's kind of like how these automations work. We're just dragging and dropping new elements to create a, a connection, um, so which is fine, and that all works just fine. Now, what I want to do is I want to do a new Shopify order to a Google Sheet, um, and then this is when I, this is where I can have like uh, all of the information from the sales that the accountant needs without giving them any extraneous information, without having to do like a full breakdown of report from the. Um, uh, from Shopify, I can give them just the information they need. I don't need to do any transformation. I just need to build this once. And then every time we have a sale at the store, it'll do all of the stuff that it needs to do. Um, so what we have effectively here, and I'm, I'm trying to do this for Prototypist as well, which is a lot more involved because Prototypist is a bit more difficult than the coffee because there's so many more different products. Um, if we edit Zap, I'll show you. So again, we've we've logged into Shopify. We have it all linked to the particular account, and we have a particular test bit of data here that is pulled back um, based on what it's doing. And then, um, yeah, I'm going to continue with that. Then in Google Sheets, we want to create a new row in a spreadsheet. Now you can actually have it do all sorts of different things here. You can have it update a column, update a worksheet, create a worksheet. You can have it update just a, a certain row, so it will find the matching piece of information, then update that row. So if you wanted to change like the order status from pending to fulfilled, it will go back and it will update and it will mark it as fulfilled. Um, so these are all things that we we want to do um but what we need to do is we need to find it so you can find worksheets there's so many different things that you can do by just linking here anyway so we want to create a new row on a spreadsheet so we've linked that to the google sheets account and then we have uh, the action that we're going to take so um we we select this particular one that we want to do so we have a particular spreadsheet tracker for this and then what we can do is we have a series of columns and for here for example you can see we've got a column called date a column called order number a column called order subtotal sub shipping subtotal vat there's no vat and coffee which is great uh, so they should all be zero for now uh, order total and so on and so forth um it'll have the billing address country we don't need to give the accountant like the address of every customer they don't need that information what we do need to know though is from a tax perspective which country we've shipped it to so we're going to collect the country uh, we're going to collect the line items so a list of the line items and we're going to collect the fulfillment status so has it been shipped or is it still pending um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have another rule but when an order is marked as complete it will then go in it will update this spreadsheet and it will change that row to fulfilled so we'll have a list of the live that's live at any time you take a code of data that's completely and utterly live and up to date no manual intervention needed and it's going to give my accountant what he needs now i haven't validated that this is all the information the account needs he's coming up next week to have a look and sit down with me and go through this but effectively what we're doing is we're creating a spreadsheet and providing all of this information in here now this is all linked to a test account in the in the Shopify stuff so it's not actually going to show like real information but it's going to provide us with enough information to be able to uh, uh, to 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 test it and make sure that it's correct so that's effectively what we're doing here uh, then we click continue and then we click on test um, and it will publish that to the spreadsheet so let me uh, let me load up the spreadsheet um, in fact I can't actually share that spreadsheet I did want to share it but I can't I've just realized I, I can't share it um again data protection rules guys data protection so yeah so you can see that this is the information we're pulling back anyway and it's going to put that through there so it's going to pull up an order number these are all fake order numbers we don't have these numbers yet uh, or if we do it's not a real order number so um that's fine uh, how much of the, the cost was in pounds for this particular one so there's just, just a 250 gram bag in this test order uh, so it was 12 quid where it's shipping to, and then particularly which ones they bought and how, what was the weight of the beans as well. So we can start to track that. And the idea is that we'll be able to, to follow this. So I'm gonna publish that. And then what we're gonna do, uh, this is V2, uh, publish. So what we need to do then is we need to create another one that's gonna, um, that is gonna update that spreadsheet, okay? So to be able to do that, we need to come back into Zapier 
and we're going to create a new one. So we're going to do a new zap. Uh, and then we're going to say, when an, this, this is the clever bit. So it's now got the AI built in, so it can try and work this out for you. So you can say when uh, an order is fulfilled in Shopify, update a row on a Google Sheet. And then what it's doing down here on the left-hand side is the co-pilot is just thinking this through and it's going to give us uh, an output very, very soon. Just had some coffee delivered, but I had a chance to, to brew it yet. Yeah, dude, give it a try. I'm really, really excited. We'll try with some bottled water, mineral like Evian or pre-filtered tap water like smart water. Uh, be really careful with what water you use for coffee. It makes a big difference. I'll let the guys talk you through. Coffee Collective, yeah. Uh, Elias, hey man, good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you're uh, uh, having a great time at work. It has to be so expensive though. Wait, what does? What has to be expensive? Single origins are the best? Yeah. So it, it really uh, depends on the single origin. Like I think that for most people, a blend is the right thing from a coffee perspective. Um, I think the flavor notes and profiles that most people want is a blend. When you get into single origins, you're going for a really specific thing. It's just purely by the fact that you're only focusing on one bean and grown in one location and all of this. So from that perspective on coffee, I think you really need to be into coffee before you're trying single blends because well single origin, sorry, because that that's where you're getting to the there might be elements of that coffee that you don't like and you are compromising your overall coffee flavour to focus on one part that you really do want, whether that's, you know, certain flavor note a certain flavor profile a certain mouthfeel or something like that i will say that single origins do tend to have a way better mouthfeel especially if you're using something like a lever espresso machine which really highlights that um that that's where it's really noticeable that's where it's really noticeable so yeah um danish bakeries aren't compatible with me oh, they love mar marzipan and nougat they do they do they do copenhagen has cope already in the name yeah when we were in copenhagen um like we spent a fortune on food. Like it was just so good. We we did uh, um, we did quite a few restaurants and we did a lot of street food. My wife actually lost her. She got some churros on um, uh, there's kind of like a, a new a street called New Harbor. I can't remember what it's called in Copenhagen, but it's like the really famous one where all the pirates used to live and stuff like that. And walking up and down there, she had some churros that she just bought, and the seagulls stole them as well, which was really cool. Uh, this might be a dumb question as well, but if two people order in quick succession, does it overwrite the Vesta board? So, Alvi, the way the Vesta board works is it kind of stores them up. So, um, it, the, 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 the API for this is like, uh, it, it shoves it through to Vesta board API, and then Vesta board API on their website, then tells the Vesta board when to update. So, the Vesta board will only ever update every 20 seconds. It will always have a 20 second pause between it finishing one and then starting the next one. Um, what that does mean is when we have really busy times, like for example, when GMK Rubber Hose went live and we sold hundreds of sets off the bat, like within 10 minutes, um, it was actually going for hours after that. Like the sales had slowed right down to a trickle, but because of the bulk of them there and they were all waiting 20 seconds, that means you only get three out a minute, right? Okay. So if you take a hundred orders in 10 minutes and you can only get three orders out a minute on the vestibule, it was just chicken tickling round for hours afterwards. Now, the other interesting thing as well, is what it does for uh, what the vestibule does for uh, PT is um, we have we we have the order number there so, so so it has slightly different mentions it just says an absolute legend uh, has just bought X Y and Z um, and then it shows the order number as well so that we can actually go grab that and print it off and, and pick and pack it if it's something that's in stock so it's kind of like a notification and in stock orders come through so we can get it this is why if you order from us sometimes in an afternoon like it'll be picked packed and labeled within like thirty seconds because we're on it. Um, so yeah, so we, we have slightly different things. Now, if the Vesta board message is the same, so if we took out those random things and we just put like uh, uh, an absolute legend has just bought Jim K rubber hose and then the next order came through and it was exactly the same, it was identical, the Vesta board API would ignore it and it would move on to the next one uh, because the, the, there's no point in posting two identical posts. So it wouldn't wait the 20 seconds for both of them. It wouldn't wait 40 seconds before updating because it was two. It would just wait the standard 20 seconds and then it would find the next order that was different that would highlight a change on the Vesta board for it to flick around. From a startup business perspective, is Shopify worth it? Um, Shopify is what I know, and I don't know WooCommerce. Um, I don't think it's worthwhile going down the, the, the whole rasp of building a custom site until you know 
that your business is viable okay like i don't know right now that jay's roastery is going to be viable business and keep us going you know for years to come it's it's an idea i've had it's something i want to pursue it's something i'm really passionate about i can't guarantee that that's going to match you know darkwoods in five years time it's probably not um i'd like it to that's where i want it to get to but i don't know so i don't think it's worthwhile building a custom site i think with all of the kind of squarespace woocommerce shopify all of those they have limitations and you end up having to install third-party applications to get around those limitations but that's fine for most part i I can't imagine now moving away from Shopify just because I'm so ingrained in the culture. It's like Apple versus Android. If you get into that ecosystem, it's really hard to kind of move away from it um, unless you go fully custom. And that's that's something that you, you depends on the, the scale of the business. Uh, JCC says, I did a job at a small roastery in Wade Bridge and they made me a coffee on their super duper Italian espresso machine. And that's the best coffee I've ever had. Nice, dude. Yeah, we've got a, um, a Liverpool espresso machine here at the workshop. Uh, we tend to use, uh, down at the roastery, we tend to use ACOS Vostok machines, which again, leave a hand pull. Really great coffee. What plan are you using on Shopify? So we have uh, so, uh, uh, two different ones. So for prototypists, we have Shopify Pro uh, Plus, whatever it's called. Um, for Jay's Roastery, we're using tier three of the standard Shopify because it's a new business and I don't know how much money it's going to make. <clears throat> Never knew coffee was VAT free. Yeah, so coffee is VAT free as long as you don't put a service on it. So there's certain things in the UK which are VAT free. Um, this is why like biscuits are VAT free, but cakes are not. This is why there's the whole Jaffa cake malarkey that goes on quite a few times. Um, or is it the other way around? I can't remember. But like Either biscuits or cake, one of them is VAT free. The other one isn't. I think it's biscuits that are VAT free, but I, I, but I might stand corrected. Um, so yeah, so when you when you consider things, some things are VAT free, some things are reduced VAT. Coffee uh, is classed as VAT free, especially if you sell it to whole beans. If you apply a service to that coffee, um, that you charge for, then you have to charge VAT. So if we if we applied like a grinding service and we charged more money for the ground coffee than the whole beans, which most companies do, um, we would then have to charge VAT because we've applied a service to that coffee and we've uplifted its value. Um, and that's what VAT is, it's a value added tax. So wherever you're adding value to something, you get tax on it basically, unless it's a VAT free product. If we started to offer cups or mugs or tamps or other consumables uh, to go with coffee or tools we would have to charge VAT on those and that's where it starts to get really complex because then you have a mixed VAT model that means you, some things you pay VAT on and some things you don't and that's why I want to get this all automated and up front so that we don't have to worry about that headache when it becomes a reality so yeah um, one of the things I absolutely want to do is we actually have some copper uh, tamps made for uh, for prototypists actually for the keyboard brand of all things um, with the PT logo on the head so as you press the, P uh, the, the, the tamp into your coffee it will leave the PT logo um, uh, embedded in the coffee which is really fun right it's very fun um, and we actually had I think 25 of them made in copper and um, they haven't finished being manufactured yet but we'll have them in stock at some point soon but we're going to have to sell them through prototypists because there's vat on them and prototype is vat registered rather than through jay's roastery which is not vat registered and i don't want to go through the registration until i have to so yeah gdpr is into the chat dude data protection act is not it, it, you have to take it seriously <clears throat> Need to batch them up like five absolute legends just bought. So unfortunately, the Vestibold API isn't smart enough to do that. We would have to feed into it that kind of modifier on the, uh, like an if statement, like if more than one, then change the number to how many the total is, like a sum if, or if not, and leave it as nil and ignore it. Um, but it's fine the way it is. Finally able to catch the stream. Thanks, man. You don't want to go custom unless you're a major retail manufacturer. I, yeah, I generally agree. I generally agree. Like, like I couldn't, I wouldn't even want to go like custom with prototypist and you know that's a multi-million dollar well multi-million pound company now so i wouldn't want to do that um but yeah for some reason i cannot still be using my uh balletti even having a decent espresso machine well we've got a londinium that's the, the the machine we use here at the workshop and then i i 
I may be in the process of trying to buy a Lamazoko for home. At the minute at home, I've got a Sage Beans cup machine because my wife wants just easy to make coffee. Uh, so we've got a Oracle Touch at home. Um, but then at the roastery, we'd use the ACS Fostock machines. I have a thing for Liverpool coffee. It is just so good, uh, especially from a mouthfeel perspective. If anyone ever comes to the PT workshop for a visit, I will make you a coffee. Um, it's really good. SPC mug would go hard. Dude, there, ha there are SPC mugs. Do you want to see one? Do you want me to go grab an SPC mug? Uh, if you wanted me to grab an SPC mug, put the SPC thing in. The, the, the thing in chat. The, the... Give me some rockets if you wanted me to go grab the SPC mug. Anyway, right. So, the next thing we want to do is uh, build a trigger. Um, oh, yeah, it was coming up with the idea. So, new fulfilled order in Shopify. That's what we wanted to do. But then the second action, we don't want the one that's come up with because it's come up with that one. So we, we actually want to go to uh, Google Sheets and have a Google Sheets one. So, <coughs> new fulfilled order is what we've got. We've got the account. Uh, we're just going to link that. Uh, ooh, wrong one. No. Choose that one. There we go. There we go. Um, and we're just going to test the trigger. This is where it's just making sure I can't find any fulfilled orders. Okay, I mean that's because we've not fulfilled one when since since it went live, and I haven't created some tests there. I'm I'm confident that it's going to be fine. Um, so we're going to skip that, and then we're going to go on to. Um, oh, interesting. Right, it's pulled a load of information back through here. Nice. Right. Okay. So it has found a load of information. It's, it has passed. The, this is all the sort of these are all the variables that we can pick through, guys. Right. So this is just to kind of make it clear how difficult this can be. Anyway. Now we want it to output to Google Sheets. So what we're going to do is on this one, we're going to get it to update a spreadsheet row. Update a spreadsheet row. And then we're just going to choose the account. And then we're going to take the action. So it's going to be on my Google Drive. It's going to be the sale tracker. And then choose value it's gonna be the sales tracker okay and then we're gonna choose what value we're gonna to have to match on the row um, I don't know how we're gonna do this so this is where oh okay this is really easy we can just match it to the order number which is which comes through his name nice that's really easy so the row that matches and then what we're gonna update is just the fulfillment status This one says partial on it, and that one says fulfilled. Interesting. Fulfillment service Amazon. We haven't used Amazon, so I think this has just got. I think that's what we're going to want. Oh, we don't need two of it though. Okay, we're going to click on continue. And then we're going to click on test. And what I'm going to do in the background is I'm just going to I'm just going to check that this actually does uh, update the spreadsheet. So let me I can't show you the spreadsheet for GDPR reasons, but I'm going to try and I'm going to try and check this. Troubleshoot error. There's an error writing. I'm not able to pass the range for sales. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Pass the name for sales. Well, it's definitely that worksheet because that's the only one we've got. And we definitely want to look up on on the name. Oh, hold on. I know what we're doing. Right. Okay. So on the row. Okay. So it's got two bits of test data in as a spreadsheet here. Um. Okay, but I want it to do something custom, so it wants to search, uh, so we want it to do it on name, which is order number. Look up spreadsheet row in Google Sheets. 
We'll add a lookup spreadsheet row, connect it to the row field and open it for configuration. Okay. So lookup spreadsheet row. So this might be where we're doing it wrong. So this is where we need another action here. But you can basically build up the whole automations by doing this. Okay. Look up column. So we're going to look up order number. Look up value. Name. Nice. Supporting lookup column optional optionally specify another column you want to search by. No, we just need to do it by that one. Uh, supporting lookup value. Uh, we don't need to do that either. Bottom up. Search from the bottom of the sheet. In other words, pick the most recent. Uh, true. Should this step be considered uh, a success when nothing is found? No. No. Okay, cool. Cool. Okay. Error from Halton. Nothing could be found for the search. That's fine. Okay. Um, we don't need to find anything from the search just yet because that's fine. That's going to be fine. Okay. And then we can update the spreadsheet. Yeah, we can just give that test. Cool. Okay. And then we should be able to... Look up spreadsheet rowing. Yeah, okay. So it's we know it's gonna look up the spreadsheet row. And it's gonna be in column B. Oh yeah, it's got yeah, okay. <laughs> you see I'm I'm making this up as I go along, right? Yeah. That looks right. Okay, I just need to create a test data to try it. Okay, cool. I think that's gonna work though. I think that's gonna work. I really do think that's gonna work. I just need to fulfill one of the test bits of data. <clears throat> I guess play with G's lever. It's so good. Didn't know they existed. Yeah, right, okay. Let me go grab an SPC mug and show you. Let me go grab an SPC mug and show you one. I'll be back in a second. That's not a rocket. It's a rocket. This is like Dutch algebra to me. Well, I mean, we just this is the simplest way of automating it. Like, uh, if Ed's in chat, Ed's automated stuff for me before, and he's done a bang up job of it. But he's had to write custom code. I couldn't even start with that. This I will get working. It just takes me time. It just takes me time. So, but once I know how to do it, I'll be able to come back and do it a thousand times. The only problem I have actually with um, with this is uh, Zapier is expensive. So, just to try and give you, uh, let me just save this. Update sale, update fulfillment status. So we don't have a lot of these turned on yet because um, save draft. Um, we don't have a lot of these automations turned on yet because I've only just started using Zapier. But already, like in a couple of days, when they're not fully automated, I've hit 159 zaps out of uh, uh, 1500 that were allowed um, but Zapier is really 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 expensive so we have included at $39 a month 1500 tasks and we can get additional tasks uh, up to 3000 for three and a quarter cents each which doesn't sound like a lot but when I was looking at this I think that we're going to use somewhere in the region of about 15,000 zaps a month um, which makes it really expensive. Um, so there is, there is like a, a, a like this cost me four hundred and seventy dollars for the year for that plan, which isn't that bad actually. But I think we're going to need to pay triple that minimum. Now there is another option um, called Pabli, and what Pabli does is it's just something very very similar. Um, let me see if I can find it. So this is Pabli. Now, it basically does a sim similar sort of thing in terms of workflows. I'm just going to create a random one here. Um, 
and I have tried to make a couple here, um, but I haven't really used them. And you can do very, very similar things. So you can link in Shopify, uh, but this this doesn't work on the the parameters that are already there by connecting the account. So it's not as intuitive as as Zapier is. Um, so you can kind of do it for for Shopify that like you can pick a lot of these things, but for this to be able to get this to work, you can't just log into your Shopify account and it pulls everything through an API. For this one, you have to create a webhook, and then all of these come off individual webhooks, uh, and then you can kind of create like the different things. This also doesn't support Vestibord, so I can't do the Vestibord ones through here, which is slightly frustrating. But we'll get to that. So you say it's like Dutch algebra, and algebra. Um, like there are so many ways of doing this. And this is the easiest way, by far the easiest way. Um, let me go grab the SPC mug though. I'll be back in a second. mugs I will show you said mugs <sighs> let's just uh, hide that first mug we have a proto come on camera focus we have a prototypist mug prototypist keyboards these have actually been in the cupboard for about four years uh, this one is actually supposed to be bledins um, it's never been used it's clean and it's supposed to be Bledin's. And he, if you know Bledin, he was part of the MK UK a while back. He's not so active anymore. Um, he was supposed to come to the old workshop to pick this up, and he never did. So it's been sat in the cupboard waiting for him. We also have the glorious pink internal <laughs> SPC mugs. Come on, camera. Please focus. There you go. So you can see all of those lovely rocket ships um, dancing around the mug. This is this is Mal's one. Um, if anyone would like these, I can order some. They're not the greatest mugs for like coffee or anything, unless you're using instant. But if anyone would like some, <laughs> this is our this is our Twitch sub logo. So if you are a Twitch sub, this is the logo, the lovely rocket ship, uh, the SPC. Uh, Twitch subs. We also have the sub goal as well at the bottom. We're trying to get to 225 subs. When we do, we're going to do three GMK set giveaways. If that's today, there's fewer viewers. So. Maybe you want to try and get us over the line today so you've got more of a chance of winning. Um, but yeah, so the SPC rocket was designed by Tim. I don't know if he's watching, but if he is, uh, he designed the uh, the rocket ship for, for the SPC. So yeah, maybe that's something you want to take a look at, guys. Oh dear. Oh man. Rocket ship. It's a rocket ship, JCC. Yes, please. Yes, please. My mum said she likes the rocket. <laughs> I actually have a hoodie with it on. I've got two hoodies. I've got a pink hoodie with it on. I've got a black hoodie with it on as well. Tim also arranged those, but I want to get like a stitched one. Uh, she would have one as well. Yeah. Um, if any SPC subs would like to get one of those mugs, go go make a message in the SPC on Discord down here, and I'll uh, I'll have a look and see if we can do that. So I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, that on Zapier, we've got it working now, right? I'm pretty sure that this is, um, this is going to work now, right? Okay, so it's going it, to, it already outputs to the, the uh, to the Vesta board. I know that does. Now the test data we've been using works with a new order. And I think this is going to work as well. I'm going to turn it on. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some test orders on the website later on and just see just see if it does update. I'm pretty sure it will. I'm pretty sure it will. Okay. Yeah. 
let's 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 have a look through the test data here. New order in Shopify. Edit that. New order. Which test data do we have a look at here? Um, test data suggests that this was. Seven. Okay, it's twenty-seven in there. Oh, okay. So that's that's why. Okay, so we can't test it on that data. Let's see if we can find some more records. So let's use that record. And let's publish that. Right, okay. Let's edit that once more. And I'm just going to try and test this. Okay, so that worked. Okay. I can see on my spreadsheet that that worked through. Right, let's see if we can then update that. Uh, let's try and see if this works. Edit zap. <clears throat> let's try find some test data. fulfilled order. Let's see if that's the right command. Triggers when an order is fulfilled. Okay. So that is correct. Account. It's fine. Hmm. So the way we are completing these test orders isn't showing these correctly. Let's have a look why. That's definitely... That test order is definitely fulfilled. So it's just not finding... It's not finding it. Is it not working? Okay. Right, okay, I see. Okay. Let me uh, let me see if I can authorize this uh, this app. gonna have to do this in another browser window but let's see if I can do that Sky. I don't know what music this is actually. This is uh, Olive Grove. It's on Stream Beats by Harris Heller. Um, the yeah, so it's uh, called Stream Beats Lo-Fi by Hall Harris Heller. Is a playlist. It's on Spotify. That's where it's playing from right now. Okay, so that's that done. Right, okay, let's go back into into here and let's see if we can find that test data now. Let's 
edit this hit the existing draft okay so new fulfilled order Product new ref new refund new tag update because updated trigger when an order is updated. I wonder if that's what we need instead. Actually, let's see if this finds anything. Unable to pull orders. Hmm. Okay. So I think it must be new fulfilled order when an order is fulfilled. No fulfilled order spent. I mean, I wonder if that's because they have to be fulfilled afterwards. Okay. And then we're going to look at the spreadsheet row. And we're going to look at the name in order number column. We're going to look from the bottom up. That's fine. Can we test that yet? because it's not finding anything from Shopify. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, right, okay. Now taking the information from column B, we're going to update the fulfillment status. But I think this is wrong. I feel like this is wrong. I don't think we want to, we want to set customer. I mean, it's got to be from that. Hmm. Okay. I feel like I'm I'm getting lost on this now. I feel like I probably need to start this from scratch because like, I feel like it's just getting too deep. This might be where I need to have a chat with my friend Ed. <laughs> oh dear, it is what it is. It is what it is. Right, should we get onto a keyboard build instead and try and come back to this automation malarkey later on? Like some of the stuff is so easy and some of it's really not. Um, like if we wanted to do something really fun, uh, we can probably do like a really fun one. Like, um, oh, one of the things that you can do actually is um, uh, like we can do, like if there's a new product that I add to the website, I'll, I'm going to automate this now, right? So if I add a new website, a new product, uh, new product, new product. If I had a new product to Jay's Roastery, it's we're going to make this put an announcement out on Discord. Um, yeah. Cool. So it's found that. Continue with the selected record. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to Discord. And we're going to create a new post. Send a channel message. And then this is linked to me already. And then action, we're going to select the channel name. And this is going to be in uh, Jay's Roastery Announcements, right? Oh, man. Jay's Roastery Announcements. There we go. Wait, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's come up with that. Uh, we've just uh, launched a new coffee. Go check it out. And then what we can do is put in the title of it. And then I wonder if we can put a link in there as well. I wonder if there is, uh, I wonder if there's a link to it. Hmm. This could be quite fun. Oh, we could chuck an image in there. Images. Okay, so there's no data, so it doesn't have them. So, right, okay, fine. Variance, image ID, product ID. Image for the product ID, image SRC. Yeah, okay. We can probably chuck an image in there. That's probably going to work. This one will post in Discord when I when I when I do it as well. Um, it's really weird that there isn't a, uh, a URL. Oh, there is an online store URL. Cool. Okay. P 
ping. Well, I don't want to ping everyone. Like, let's let's not do that right now. <laughs> Text to speech. No bot name. Uh, oh, this is going to be the name of who posts it. Let's put that in. Cool. Okay. Should we should we just test this and see if this works? Is today not a public holiday? No, today's not a public holiday. Kenny Trist, I'm drinking uh, uh, right now. Uh, I have like a half finished cup of my own coffee. This is the Fiction Blend. This is what I'm drinking right now. These beans are in stock. You can go buy them. Um, if you are interested in picking up those the, the beans, Kenny, you can buy them from that link right there and we'll ship them out for you in a couple of days. Um, yeah, this is what I'm drinking. Uh, berries, vanilla and soft milk chocolate are the tasty notes. Uh, and there's some more details there for you as well, as well as some recipes on how to brew it as well, depending on whether you're using espresso or pour over. That's our current favorite recipes. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to test this and let's let's flick over to Discord as well and have a look. So I'm just going to test that. Let's see if it posts it in Discord. Where's Discord gone? Discord. Jay's Restoring Announcements. We've just launched a new coffee. Go check it out. Dude, that's so cool. That's so cool. That's really just posted it right in, uh, right into uh, into the James Rushing announcements. Like if you, if you if you are in the Discord, guys, you can go check this out. Like we've just created the automation. It's written it out. Um, it's even put the image in. I need to wrap the image, and it has put the the URL. Um, let's let's uh, let's go back to the action. I think what we need to do is we need to put. Oh, okay. So if we put the space in there, let's get rid of the image totally um go check it out uh the classics blend uh and then if we do like that and it's in, uh, uh you can grab it here if we do that let's 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 try this let's uh try that and publish that retest it let's test that ah oh, yes that's even better we just sort of new coffee. Go check it out. The classic blend. You can grab it here. I can see you morphing into the meme guy that has red ribbons on the wall trying to explain the conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. Yeah, hundred percent. Like I like I'm I'm terrible when it comes to like stuff like this, but I'm figuring for it. But yeah, like if you guys are in Discord, um, if you go down to the Jay's Roastery section in Discord now, you'll be able to see that in the announcements channel. We've just, it just it, we've just automated this and it's posted twice now. Um, in fact, uh, I think we can make that even better. This is really cool. This is really cool because I can I can use this for PT for stock drops. Oh, I wonder if it. Um... Hmm. Hmm. You may have to select it from the channel list. They weren't showing for me originally. Um. From the channel list. It, it, they're showing now in the announcements in Jay's Roastery. I can see that on Discord now. They're, they're showing up in that channel list. So, yeah, that works. Very nice. I need to decide uh, which blend I'm grabbing. You may have to select it from the channel list. They weren't showing from the image. I'm not sure I follow no one born, but if you let me know what you mean by that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I didn't know that today was a public holiday in the, in Europe, to be honest, Tank House. I didn't know that. We had Monday as a public holiday, but I worked that as well. Um, but here it's uh, it's a little bit different. Cool. Okay. I think, I think, I think I can, I think I can make this a little bit better. Because what I think I can do is on, when we've got the blend, I think I can put the name of it in bold. Like, I'm hoping that this will... Yeah, I'm hoping that if I edit it like this, it'll put it in bold. And then we put the URL in. Okay, let's let's go with that. Let's see if that works. Let's uh, let's retest that and see if that posts into the Discord. Well, it does, and it works. Okay, we've just launched a new coffee, the Classics Blend. It puts it in bold as well. Nice, nice. So that works. Cool.
one final one and it should put another space between classics blend and there we go we just launched a new coffee cool right okay um i'm gonna tidy these up <laughs> i'm gonna tidy these up a little bit you see this is the kind of thing that i want to do like now i know that whenever i launch a new coffee it's automatically gonna tag people that's really cool i like that and i think what we can do as well is we can have it tag a role as well i think so for now we'll just put that as an uh, everyone and then i won't test it again ping username roles and mentions Is it going to find that? Choose a value. Custom. Ping username roles and everyone. True. Ping username role and everyone mentions. So what? Ping username and role and everyone mentions. But we're not specifying a role anywhere. We're just I think I need to do that in a test server before I try it. I think I definitely need to try that in a test server. Uh, I'm not everyone in the Discord may be seeing the roastery things. I just saw the Coffee General up until yesterday. Yeah, so the the, the roastery stuff only went live yesterday. Um, so I changed all the channels yesterday. Um, so yeah, so that, that's why you didn't know about them before. Um, because they weren't there until yesterday. <laughs> but Jay's Roastery is something that's just come out quite recently. So yeah, that's that. Right, who's who's ready for us to, to move away from um, automating stuff <laughs> to actually doing some keyboard work? Who's interested in seeing that? Although saying that, it's half past three nearly now. Should we have a look at the, the keyboard I have to build today? So, let's have a look. I'm going to the way those cups. This is the uh, this is the note I got um, from the build. I'm just gonna just gonna fold it over so you can't see the name, um, which is really really nice. It's nice when we get little notes like this. So I'm just gonna read this out. It says, "Hey Jay, I was just going back through our email chain for the Sagittarius build. Based on what I've reread, the build is this: A and assign, full shifts, full backspace, caps lock, uh, up to you. Don't mind on this one. That means we're going stepped caps, boys." Uh, I just want to say thank you again for being patient with me, answering all of my questions and providing advice. You're such an important pillar in our community and I can't thank you enough for the support you provide to everyone, including myself. I hope you enjoy building the Sagittarius. If you want to do it on stream, I don't mind, which is why we're doing it on stream today. So let's take a look at the board. We might not get it finished today, but we'll, we'll, we'll make a start. Some lovely multicolored packing peanuts here. First up, stabilizers. He's requested that we use uh, QMX stabilizers today. If you haven't used QMX stabilizers before, these are GMK's new stabilizers and quite possibly my favorite ones on the market right now as well. So that's what we're gonna to use today. He's provided a key set, which is MW Demon Girl. This is the base kit. This is the key set we're going to be putting on the board for. With the Accent Spacebar kit. Hey, sensors in chat. I'm throwing the switches away. We have switches. These are... Let's have a look at these. These are... Ooh, Gatron Blacks. I thought they were Hades for a second because of the way the light caught them, but these are Gatron Black switches. Silky smooth. Silky, silky smooth. They're pretty cool. Sorry it's taken me so long to get to this Samson. And we may not finish it today, but it will be finished soon, even if we don't finish it today. And then here we have the keyboard we're building today. So this is a Sagittarius. They don't 
Are they oil kings? I think these might be oil kings, you know. I think that they are oil kings, but Samson, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, they're oil kings. And then here is the board. So it's covered in uh, peck and peanut dust. Yeah, I'm going to say they look like oil kings. Yeah. I was pretty certain they were. So if you guys haven't seen this board before, this we actually built a Sagittarius on stream maybe two years ago. Uh, I had one of the prototypes we built on stream then. There is a bit of paper in here. Do I need to read this? I'm just going to check before I share the screen. Oh, nope, nope. So here's the board. I have a set of one of my boards. They're really nice. Yeah, Oil Kings are pretty cool. They had been stocked for a while, but they sold out quite quickly. How long have I been into keyboards? Um, that's a long question. So I joined the community for the group, well, just before the group buy of SA Calm Depth, the original run back in 2014, so about 10 years ago now. I was kind of dipping in and out of the hobby before that. Um, I started streaming under Jay Keebs in 2015, I think. And then I started streaming on Top Click in 2019. And then I set up Prototypist Keyboards in 2019 as well. That's been running for five years in November coming. And we've been streaming on Prototypist for the last three years. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. We have, if you haven't seen the Sagittarius, it's, uh, it's a pretty unique layout keyboard. It's a very, very unique. So we have feet. We'll put them to one side. We have our daughter board. We have a JST cable. We have gaskets. These are perforated gaskets. So we can install the camera, please. Focus. Focus camera. There we go. There you go. You see perforated. We have this feels like a brass plate. I apologize in advance, Samson. This is going to get patina on it they just just from handling it this is going to get patina on it because i don't think these are clear coated but this is the layout of the keyboard as you can see it's fully ergonomical and this here this is actually uh, there are leds under this on the pcb and that's actually the sagittarius um uh stars this the um i've forgotten the word for a group of cluster of stars in the sky what the hell is that word? Someone's going to tell me in chat and I'm going to forget. Constellation. That is exactly the word I'm looking for. Yes, thanks. It's in the constellation. Um, that is a constellation Sagittarius itself. So there we go. So we're going to use uh, the brass plate today. Yeah, constellation was the word I was looking for. I just could not think of it. And of course we have the PCB as well. And as I said before, you can see that it's got the LEDs here to light up for the constellation as well, which is really, really, really cool. So I'll take this out of the packet. Yeah, constellation. So there we go. Okay. That's a supernova motif on the, wait, when you get to that. Yeah, there is. There you go, you can see. It's got that there. Now this PCB does also have um, full access to basically all of the functions on the PCB as well if you want to use a header, which is pretty cool. That's really good. Gondolindrum designed this PCB and he's just a really nice guy. Um, I think it was Gondolindrum. Pretty sure it was Gondolindrum, right? Yeah, this, this feels like a Gondolindrum PCB because it's got these, these bits on the back. Yeah, Sagittarius PCB uh, revision pre-alpha designed by Gondolindrum in partnership with Upas. All right, let's make this design a reality. Each soul is a single universe. Each mind bears the wages of their sins. Each person carries the blessing of their existence. What a great quote. What a great quote. So let's put those to one side and then we'll take the board out as well. Board. I can't remember which version of the board she's got. 
or wrapped in PC paper. Oh, dude, you've got the best version. So this is the, the e-white version, which has the golden base with the brass weight. Look at this. And it's got the Sagittarius Archer. Look at that. Look at that for a thing of beauty. Did I see what the Gondo put on the Compact Ergo PCB? I don't think it did, no. Look at this. This is a thing of beauty. Such a heavy board as well. And there you go. You can see that the constellation. The LEDs will shine through that when it's plugged in as well. This is an absolutely beautiful board. Okay. It's a South Pole full size Ergo, and it's put. It's not really compact, is it? <laughs> Good old Gondo. I do love him. Okay, so going back to our build notes, we can pick on caps lock, but I think this plate only supports one caps lock. So I think we are stuck with full caps lock on this particular plate. Um, for stabilizers, we need one for left shift. We need one for left space bar. We need one for right space bar. We need one for right... Sh Do you want to split right shift, Samson? We have one for right shift. We have one for anus I enter, and we also have one for backspace. So... We need one, two, three, four, five, six, six stabilizers today. Luckily, we have plenty in this kit. That's six stabilizers. They're all 2U on this particular build. So we're going to crack on with lube in case he needs. Let's grab a brush and some lube. Okay. Now, these don't take much in the way of lubricating, don't these particular stabilizers? They are the new QMX ones from GMK. They're probably the easiest stabilizers to tune completely across the market. They just need a thin layer of lubricant on the, uh, that's way too much of a brush, dude, what are you doing? A thin layer of lubricant on the wire. And then we're gonna push the wire into the housing and twist it up, and that's in place. Oops, no it's not. He says that's in place and it wasn't at all. Let's see if we can get that back in. There we go. Now that's in place. There we go. <laughs> it's in place properly. And then what we're going to do is just going to paint a really thin layer of lube just on the inside of the slider housing on both sides. And this is to try to not go up the works, but to just try and make it nice to use. Remember, too much lube is a bad thing on any stabilizer. And then the final thing we're going to do, just to make sure that the, uh, the stabilizer has uh, plenty of lubrication for our future, we're just going to put a small blob just up where the wire fits, just on the inside, just there. And that's going to stop it feeling gummy, it's going to stop it feeling too bad, uh, and it's going to keep it nice and simple. I'm just going to repeat that on the other side, and there should be plenty of loop for this stabilizer. Quite possibly the easiest stabilizer to tune right now, they don't need any rework or anything, you don't need to go back to them usually, um, they're usually just good enough straight off the bat from doing this. The shine on the analog art one, man, I need one. Yeah, so they, this is really old analog dreams. It's been my daily driver usage for a long time now. Since I built the bullet pretty much. I'm just gonna paint the slider rail just gently, just delicately, not too much. Flip it over, small amount of lube just up on the inside there. And then we've got one stabilizer ready made. I'm going to repeat that again. I'm just going to keep going until we've done it all the way through them. Again, it's always easy to add more lube later on, guys, and it is to take it away. So don't go overboard with these. You'll just ruin the stabilizers and make it mushy. Ok, 
keyboard looks absolutely beautiful though. Great choice of board. <clears throat> I'm waiting on a sesame keyboard coming. Get my first house keyboard layout. Nice. trying to gum these up you're just trying to get them to work nice and smoothly and these are the quickest and easiest stabilizers to do right now based on my experience as soon as you start in stock you need a new thing yeah it's ages since we sold out of these so you must have had it a while i know it's been here for a few weeks but Maybe a month. What made you get into keyboards 10 years ago? You must have been into it before committed to group by. Um, kind of, a little bit into it, yeah. Um, the What really got me into keyboards was the fact that I used to work for a, a large financial institution and I was using my keyboard every day. So I just wanted a nice tool to do my job with, right? And I'd, I'd use like the company provided keyboards and didn't really enjoy typing on them thought I'd really like one of those old school mechanical keyboards and then I found that there was newer versions like the poker and stuff like that so I picked up one of those and that's what just got me into the hobby you know? just using them for work basically I think we're good on the other side just paint some lube that and there um, and then I saw that you could get custom keycaps and yeah it just kind of enticed me into the hobby i was like that that's cool it's really cool that someone is going to the effort of having these made and i wanted to support that um so yeah and it just so happened that at the time someone was making essay calm depths the original version which was a really interesting key set actually because it had a load of um there, there was no such thing as like a standardized base kit at that point no one really knew what to include or what not to include so it had weird things like uh, split space which is really cool I think my phone's just vibrated because there was there's was something that I was supposed to try and bid on today and buy. And I might have missed it. <laughs> Should we have a look? Let me let me have a look. I don't know Spiker. Hey man, thanks for being here. Oh no, it's just oh Captain my captain. <laughs> Liking all the stories on uh, on Facebook. I'm good on this bike. Thank you very much for that. Um, let me see if I can find this uh, thing that I was supposed to bid on today. Let me see if I can find it. I'm going to share this with you. So this is this is um, this is what I was supposed to be looking at today. This is uh, the government website for an auction of personalised car registration plates, and there was a really really cool one. Um, I wanted this typed TYP3D typed. I thought that would make a really really good registration plate for the business. Um, I do have an account for this, I'm not logged in, but the current price of this is £1,010. That's a lot of money, and I cannot justify buying this now. Um, at the time I was originally looking, it was £350, and I thought that was a lot of money to pay for it. But typed would just be perfect for the business. Um, 
So yeah, I, I sadly I cannot afford this. Like, like, like it was 350 pounds starting, and bidding started uh, uh, yesterday. I think it finishes on the 14th of May, and it's now already a thousand pounds. Like it's going to be like three or four thousand pounds when it finishes, and I I just can't justify it. Um, so yeah, it is what it is. But I really wanted it. Easy business expense. It's too expensive for a business expense. Like, my accountant would have a fit if I bought that. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's that's what I wanted. I just cannot justify £1,000 for it. Um, and and it's, it's going to be more than that when it goes anyway. But it would have just been really, really cool to have that on the company truck. So, missed opportunities and all that. But it is what it is. <laughs> business expense marketing easy cut. it's too expensive to spend on from the business for that like like the business could afford it sure but like i could buy so many other things with that. i could buy a ton of stock with that right i could buy a lot of gmk color sets or i could buy um you know a few thousand switches or whatever else and it, it's more important that i spend money on those things than it is on <laughs> an advertising plate for like the 10 people that are ever going to see it and realize what it means you got the coffee today. It smells fantastic, dude. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that you got the coffee in. I'm super, super proud of the whole coffee already. Like we've we've sold hundred over a hundred bags of coffee already, and like that's just phenomenal. Like we've we've sold more coffee in two days on Jay's Roastery than we sold in total on um, Typist's Brew when we did that last year. It would have been so nice. It would have been nice, but sadly, I just cannot justify the cost. Um, man, I really wish I could do it. I really do wish I could do it. Someone, um, Mel, suggested the other day that we should use like the subs money from Twitch to pay for it. I was like, we'd need like a thousand Twitch subs to pay for it. And <laughs> we don't have that many. <laughs> so it's just not going to happen. Wait, have I already, I've already looped this one. What am I doing? That's already looped. Did I loop this and then put it back? I must have done. Let's touch this back up because I've just grabbed hold of it. Either that or... No, this, this, I, this isn't my lube that's on this. Hold on. Samson, is there a chance that you've looped one of these stabilizers and put it back in the box? Or is this just me being blind? Tasty, tasty. Tasty, tasty. Thank you so much, uh, Norman, for the subscription. That gets us a little bit closer to our sub goal. And don't forget, we will be giving away three GMK sets when we do hit that sub goal. <laughs> Only 999 now. Thank you so much. Yeah. Like if we hit 1,000 subs this month, which we won't, because we're aiming for 225 at the minute, and then we'll be aiming for 250. So, yeah. Although I did just have to pay the bloody car insurance for this year so because we're a company we have to have like a fleet policy which covers like all of the staff to drive all of the registered cars um and because like we have to drive different cars like sometimes i drive my personal car for business expenses like business trips and things like if i go visit um pex and the Salopian, the company truck is electric so it won't make the whole trip uh without having to charge um so like i have to drive my personal car like i have to be insured by the business for that so that happens um sometimes my wife does stuff for the business as well like dropping packages off and things and of course that has to be insured as well so we have to have like a fleet policy for insurance even though we only have like one official company car um and then it like covers like if mel ever drives her car as well for business purposes as well it covers that um so we have to have fleet insurance and i just had to pay for that yesterday um and it was six thousand two hundred and two pounds for business insurance for the year six thousand two hundred and two pounds for business car insurance it was insane it was insane and th th these are kind of the costs that come with running a business yeah because we have to have a business policy like i can't do it on like a personal policy because you just can't work you can't you can't insure a, a a van or a truck on a personal policy you got one of these, but you missed the wave. Dude, it's such a cool keyboard. It's such a cool keyboard. Yeah, let me see if I can show you the invoice that I got for um, the car insurance. 
I might have to like hide something. Uh, okay, yeah, I like I don't. I don't. But um, yeah, let me let me show you this. This is this is the this is the cost of the policy. Uh, oh, if I actually maybe maybe I should hide some of this. Let me can I zoom in to a point where I can hide that? Okay, right. So all I've all I've done here before I show you this is all I've done is I've just hidden some address details and stuff like that. Um, but here, like this is the this is the policy. So the insurance premium, insurance premium tax, six thousand two hundred and two pounds and forty two pence. That's what I had to pay. That's got paid uh, yesterday or this morning. I can't remember. Um, but that is for the fleet of commercial vehicles, new business. Policy terms starts on the tenth of May to the 9th of May. So it starts on Friday um, tomorrow morning. Six thousand two hundred and two pounds and forty two pence. Six thousand two hundred. No, that's that's an annual payment. That's the annual cost to ensure all of the staff to drive a car for any car for business purposes so basically what it means is it means that like uh, mel sharon and myself we're all insured under the group policy um to drive any car or anyone that we give permission to drive one of our cars is is covered under our policy as well so love the admin thing yeah just like let's tack on a cheeky hundred quid right yeah and this was the cheapest we can get it like the, some other quotes were over ten thousand pounds absolutely bonkers absolutely insane but it's a requirement i have to have this like i can't not do it i have to have it six thousand two hundred and two pounds on car insurance payment now yeah payment due immediately the, the, the only reason they've got that on there is because the policy is due to start on friday so it has to be paid before friday they need completed funds in their account before friday which is tomorrow so yeah like it has to be paid that's just the facts so it is yeah so that's that would you need also need fleet insurance for a personal VW transport or something? So it depends on what you use cases, Pork Thief. Um, because like because we have to use it for business use here, and if we're using that vehicle, it has to be covered. So what we have is we have a fleet policy, which covers anything that I own as director, um, because it's my cars or cars cars that are either owned by me or the business or leased by me or the business that are become part of our fleet that's what our fleet is made up of right so that's all that's um that's my audi that's my tesla that's my the work van um and basically the insurance then has to cover all of the staff as well so the fleet policy covers everybody who's employed by pt and it also includes anyone who we want to give permission to drive the vehicles. So let's say, I don't know, let's say anonymous biker, you were here at the workshop, like you were physically here. And I said, uh, you know, I need you to take this stuff to the post office. Here's the keys to the van. You could then drive the van on the company policy, even though you're not a member of staff because I've given you permission to drive the car. So you would be covered under this fleet insurance. So it does have some benefits over like private car insurance, but that's why it's so expensive. Like if I was to insure these cars privately, it'd probably cost like half of this. So, but it's a requirement. We have to have that there for the business. So yeah, um, yeah, all caps payment now, yeah. Uh, just had a fiction blend pour over nice and strong but not too strong lots of flavor it's great so fresh the bloom nearly overflowed dude i'm so glad you're excited for it as well like the fiction blend it's designed as like a house coffee so i'm really glad you're excited for that you test it for business use and it's covered for damage during business use yeah yeah yeah. like it has to be covered for that right like if if i, if I said to mel i'll go deliver these packages in your personal car and she had an accident and she was like well my boss asked me to go and deliver these i'm technically on work time i'm within my working hours she wouldn't be covered on her insurance policy but she'd have to be covered on mine so yeah so yeah that's it that's how it works mm, ouch yeah gcp that's a lot it is it is it is right okay uh we've got about 15 minutes left to the stream let's see if we can get the stabilizers done and the switches installed we're not going to be able to solder today but i think we've got enough time to get the stabilizers in so let's pop the stabilizers into the board I'm just going to move the plate out of the way. I'm just going to pop it that. And I'm just going to grab a little screwdriver and I'm going to get the screws ready. Blackbrook sheesh. Wait, what's Blackbrook said now? What's Blackbrook said? Is Blackbrook still around? What did he say? What are you replying to there? What are you replying to? <laughs> Ungodly. So, I'm going to put the O ring. Onto there. What are we building? This is a Sagittarius for Samson, who is in chat. 
um, that's his board. I'm just going to screw the stabilizer in. I was trying to put it in the wrong hole then. He said he got to play with my lever. Yeah, so we have a, a lever-based espresso machine here. Um, uh, if you look at Londinium uh, R34 up, Londinium Espresso R34, you'll find the machine that we have here at the workshop. It wasn't being rude. I'm so excited to try the Fiction Blend tomorrow. Dude, I'm so excited that you get to try it as well. Like, it's so exciting to launch something that I'm really happy with and excited about and then see what you guys have to say about it and that even it's even exciting if you guys don't like it because then if you guys don't like it i can fix it i can do something different with it but i'm so excited to to finally launch this product like the coffee stuff's been such a big thing for me over the past year and trying to get this off the ground has taken me so long and like this, the, the website is 100 percent basically in early access mode right now we're not advertising it anywhere you won't find it on a google search i don't think um because we're just giving early access to people who are basically you know friends of pt because it's our sister company um one of the really really interesting things about this actually is um <laughs> there is uh there, there is there is a group of people in the uk keyboard hobby um that like to like to talk about things that i do um let's call them the um let's call them the crash you might be able to work out which group of people it is from that uh, let's call them the crash and something that's really really funny is that they um as soon as i posted up the announcement about the coffee like going live like um uh, there was there was some comments they've got like a private hidden server which is fine people are entitled to do that it's great i love the fact that they still do this um and I, I like the fact that people find like little spaces to talk um but instantly they were like oh they, they they spent some time to find out that i had um used ai art for the website and it's like yeah i i know that like they would one of them messaged me about it and and told me about it and they're like oh uh, oh it's been um we're under the understanding that you're using ai art for this because you haven't renamed the image i'm like yeah i know we are like it literally says on the website front page we're, we're using ai art for now and we're going to update it in the near future right so like that's literally a disclaimer on the on the website if you scroll right down to the bottom of jay's row street it says this it says this on the website um the really 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 funny thing about this is that um the uh the the, the crash as i'm going to call them um, this group of people uh, kind of like has a problem with MKUK and the moderators to an extent. Um, now, what what they don't realize is that I have, because I run a keyboard business, I don't often visit. Sometimes I want to visit Discords without my like my business name being available. So people don't realize that I have an alt. Um, in fact, I have a couple of alt accounts for Discord, uh, just so I can browse things in peace and quiet sometimes, or ask the silly questions that I then ask as myself. Um, I think a lot of people do this. And, um, yeah, the crash, they clearly don't know what this other account is. <laughs> they, they really don't know what this other account is. Some of the people in, the, in, the, in this crash, like, I, I am really good friends with, but they, it's, it's very, very clear. It's very, very clear based on based on the fact that I have been invited to this, um, that they don't know which my alt account is, which is quite funny. And it's really, really amusing to see them talking about stuff um, uh, that includes my stuff, which isn't, it's only a fraction of what they talk about is my stuff, to be honest. They don't talk about it all the time, obviously, but, um, but yeah, anything that I'm doing that gains their criticism, let's say, um, they don't realize that, I, that I'm aware. And it's quite funny. They probably will be now after I've mentioned it on stream, but they're not shadows. they're just people being people like people like to take um an interest in things and sometimes that can mean that they can find negative things and positive things that's fine i don't mind like i'm i'm all for people to criticize me for things like if people think i'm doing something wrong tell me i'm 100 percent open to that for kind of feedback um just don't do it behind my back and then be smiley with me right don't like go and criticize me in one place and then come and say hey jay love what you're doing you know that, that just that's just cringe but yeah um, like people can like if you're gonna criticize me in private that's fine but then you know don't be pally with me afterwards <laughs> but, but it's really really amusing that um, they've they've not clicked on which my old account is yet
Yeah, that's what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I like a lot of people in the in the crash. That's what I'm gonna call them. Um, they're they're really really nice people uh, individually. I think sometimes just little communities of people can become a little bit toxic in a way because they they create an endemic behaviour that becomes a bit of an echo chamber. And that's fine. I get it. I understand it. And I'm not trying to stop anyone having fun. That's the last thing I want to do. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. To, to see how people act in those situations. Imagine not having the thought that there are people in the server that can share stuff or even be on a server in private accounts. I'm just calling it the crash. It's not really called the crash. It's It's got another name, but you might be able to guess what it is from that. Okay. Yeah. Like, I, I just, like, I would never say something about someone, like, in private and then not feel to be able to say that into them in, in, uh, in real life. Uh, bees keys hey man good to see you late to the stream yeah we're almost finished we're just about to finish up actually we're just going to finish doing this install the switches uh, and then we're going to do the soldering on sunday because i do need to finish the stream a little bit earlier um we were an hour later starting because i had pc woes but that's been fixed now i hear you're going to start playing destiny again jane what uh, time with the dlc being free until the final ship releases yeah like i i am going to start playing destiny and i think uh, on tuesday um in fact i might i might reach out to my good friend jelly and see if jelly is free on tuesday afternoon uh when we normally stream on a tuesday afternoon to play some destiny and bring me up to speed like he can he can talk me through all of the changes and bring me up to speed that'd be really cool beast keys thank you so much for being here i appreciate you as well um i i think i think i know who you are i think you're beasley and we've we've spoken before um so yeah i think i know who you are i used to <laughs> like no life destiny too so did i at one point like um years ago when the first destiny came out 2014 i think it was um i put like a thousand hours into destiny one and then obviously destiny 2 has been out since 2017 i think um I put about 3,000 hours into Destiny 2, and then I just have not played it much at all since then. I haven't played the last couple of expansions, um, so I do want to get back into it. Let's check that our stabilizers are all fitting and working nicely. Oh yeah, look at that. Look how good that looks now. Stabilizers all in place. You're busy, yeah. I thought you were. I thought you were. Uh, I hope your gym case is doing well. You play it on the health team at 50 one Yeah. So where we're going to get to today is we're just going to put the switches into the board and then uh, and then we're going to pause the stream until Sunday when we'll finish the build off. So I'm just going to start, because this is a breastplate and it's really, really heavy, I'm just going to start in the center and we're just going to try and support the weight of the plate really early on and make sure everything's aligned into the pin. That feels like it's going to bend that pin. Oh no. That felt like I was bending that pin there, but it wasn't. And what this is going to do is it's just going to give us the right support, make sure the PCB and the plate are correctly positioned away from each other. When it's a really heavy PC plate and PCB combination like this, it's always best to try and start like centrally when you're inserting the switches to try and spread that weight out and make sure that you're supporting everything correctly. So we'll do this and then we'll do the soldering and actually put the case together on Sunday. Hoping that this afternoon I can take one of the classic cars out for a little drive while the weather is nice and sunny. What board is this? This is the um, uh, this is the Sagittarius uh, keyboard. Right. Okay. So now we've done that, we're just going to start working our way out, and we'll just do alternating rows uh, just to make sure we're we're correct in terms of spacing. No idea. I hope to find it soon, but I'm scared for the numbers given the vendor and people's opinions. Dude, like so. My, like, bees, I'm going to be really, really honest with you about this, right? The set is fire. It is pure fire. The set is so good. The set is so good. Um, I, I have issues with drop because of the way they do things sometimes. Um, and I think I talked about this on stream the other day, or maybe in Discord. I can't remember, but I did mention it somewhere. That um, uh, there was a certain project I helped with back in the Top Clack days whereby um, they didn't pay out the designer the full amount of royalties, which meant that I didn't get paid. Like I was only getting like 1% of the designers cut for something that I helped with. I wasn't even publicly announced or anything else. Um, but when 
Drop found out about it, they reduced the designer's cut by my cut, and then I just didn't get paid, I think. So I can't remember exactly the details, but I'm broadly sure that's how it happened. And I vowed at that time just to not buy anything from them. Um, the other thing as well is the fact that they don't, they flout UK um, VAT rules, which is really, really dangerous and um, not something I could support either. So I just, I just think local vendors are a better way forward. But that's not a criticism of you; it's a criticism of Drop. And um, I used to be really good friends with Yanbo and some of the other Drop guys as well. So it's not like I have a personal grudge against the people; it's just the the company's practices. Um, so yeah. But the set is fire. The set is so good. The only thing I think you should have changed is I think that on the diagonals, you should have moved the colors one key over uh, and then you'd have been able to have that flow down better um, onto the Z key because at the minute, the, the, the leftmost color, I can't remember which color it is, the leftmost color kind of ends on the full left shift for any side. So it actually looks better in an ISO layout because you get the uh, you get the function, you get the, um, the pipe key on ISO layout. So I, I think that's the only thing I would have changed. I think a couple of people mentioned that in the IC. Um, but the set, is, the set is amazing. Um, if a set comes up on the aftermarket, I'll 100% pick it up. Uh, so this is uh, GMK ZX. It's on drop right now. We only run with drop to repay the favor they've done for 100 acres. I understand that. Sometimes loyalty is a, is a good thing. Uh, excuse me for just one second, guys. I just need to answer my phone. I apologize about that, guys. Um, I was getting a phone call. Uh, it's a friend who works just over the road. He's broken his keyboard and he needs a new keyboard, so he's coming over to have a look at one. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're looking at. Right, so we're just putting switches into the board here. Um, we're gonna be finishing the stream in about five or six minutes. So if you guys have got any questions, uh, please ask away in chat. I will answer anything as honestly and as openly as I can. So please do ask away. Um, any question at all is good. How's everyone's Thursday? It's been good. I went for a manicure and a pedicure this morning, guys. So I'm feeling very refreshed. Uh, my nails are all sparkly. Come on, camera, focus. Look, I've got sparkly nails. I've never had painted nails before, but I do today. They've all been shaped. So I've already chipped my nail varnish, though. No. Just just workshop things. Um, but I went for a manicure and a pedicure. My feet feel like they've never felt before. I feel like they're new feet, almost. So yeah, so today's been a good day, and I'm thinking of taking my classic car out for a drive this afternoon, the uh, the Datsun, and I think I'm going to get the Laurel out next week as well. So yeah, beautiful digits, Jay. Thank you. How was it? It was a really interesting experience. It was a really interesting experience. <clears throat> Everything is better in ISO layout. Yeah, we did that uh, intentional to favour the ISO users, dude great decision then if you did it intentionally to uh, to spite ANSI <laughs> and support the IC users that's a great decision I think commercially I think uh, if you wanted to maximize sales then moving like the one, one key over would have been the best shout but no it looks so good in ISO layout it looks so good in ISO layout. I'm a huge fan of the set uh, did you pre-order GMK rubber hose and if yes are you going to get the car curl chain I did and I'm going to get both I pre-ordered both sets personally um, so I'm going to buy both keyboards personally Oof, I'm hoping to get an impressor back next week. Nice, dude. You have to send some pics when you do. You have to send some pics when you do. Uh, is there any chance of Cycle 7 PCB extra soon? Looking to buy a sold and non-flex going? Yeah, we should have them in stock probably a week tomorrow, um, I think. We were just waiting to make sure we needed no more support issues with them. Um, so we don't have many. We've only got a few. Um, we've only got a few available. But yeah, we will have them in stock probably a week tomorrow, I think. Yeah. Flexing on us. I haven't bought keyboards in ages, so I was spoiling myself on that. <clears throat> Speaking of that, the addition of the blue UK ISA keys tipped it over the edge for my pay 
purpose. GQ, GQ. So the secret to this is, uh, so if you if you don't know, uh, let me show you. Let me show you. Let, right. So, um, so uh, if you look at GMK Rubber Hose, so this is the website right now. You go to Live Group Buys, and you go to Rubber Hose, and you look at the international kit. The international kit to start off with only had these keys here for the UK ISO, the one, two, three, and four. And I pointed out to um, GMK, I was like, Mario, who's the rep at GMK? I'm like, Mario, Mario. Um, uh, a lot of UK folks really want to use GMK rubber hose, but they want to use the blue alert row because there's like a blue alert row in the base kit. I was like, um, the blue keys aren't in the international kit. I was like, what I'll do if you, if it's okay with you, if we just produce those four keys for UK ISO, I'll, I'll pay for however many base kits I order or Nodo kits I order. I'll buy like the same number of those. If we can do them as a small kit, thinking it'd be like, I don't know, like five or six quid extra per, per base kit. I was like, I will buy them and I'll give them away for free. And Mario said, uh, no, he said, no, you won't, you won't do that. Mario said, we'll give you them for free. We'll put them in all of the Nodo kits. So now, when you get the order kit, you don't just get the four beige keys that are here. You get the four blue keys for the alert row as well. And that's because Mario at Jim K is a motherfucking legend. He's such a cool guy. Um, so that does mean now that you can actually use the full alert row, which is the uh, the blue and uh, the blue row at the bottom here, just down at the bottom here. You can actually use the full blue alert row with UK ISO now. You don't have to default to the beige row. So yeah. So that's Mario for you. Um, he's a legend. He's a great guy. Um, the only other thing I would change about this entire base kit, um, if I could, because it's a massive base kit, is I would have put a split backspace option on the alert row, and they didn't, but that's fine. Like it's just, It would have been another couple of keys, and it's fine. Like it was, It's really expensive for what it is. Um, so yeah. So that's what happened with, uh, with that. And that's why it's the way it is so yeah good guy mario mario gmk is so good to work with sometimes like they're so good to work with um yeah <laughs> are there any car plans for cars and coffee at pt again nothing firm but i do want to do something the the issue with that is more than anything time why is that ringing um That's a really stiff switch to get in. It's in. There we go. Uh, the issue with it is just time. Um, if people really want to do a cars and coffee here, we can absolutely do that. We can get a little coffee van in. We can serve our coffee up. Um, my machine is great for doing one or two cups of coffee, but I need to get like a something more robust in to do um, that kind of level of support. But yeah, like 100%, we can do cars and coffee. I can have like six or seven of my own car collection here and we can get um uh i've got a friend who could bring a caterham and a vx220 um and we could do um what else can i get here uh, i can get uh, I, I don't know so many people classic cars. we could probably get 30 or 40 cars here um yeah we could absolutely do that we could absolutely do that i'm up for it when you've got the time for it nice GMK wins over KKB. They wouldn't put in the dark UKs for the dark alpha kit. Yeah, um, so I really like working with KKB. I was actually, I actually got a little bit frustrated with KKB today. So this is this is probably something I shouldn't share. But we were going to run the set called uh, KKB Helleborus, uh, or Helleborus, however it's pronounced. And we paid the invoice for it like a month ago. And unfortunately, KKB had an issue with their bank and it didn't clear the funds. So instead of reaching out to me and saying, Jay, can you just tell us what's happening with these funds? They actually sold my sets to another vendor in the UK. So it's not the other vendor's fault. Like, um, so it's going to be on seven keys now instead. But like, like, I paid them. I sent them the money. The bank had an issue. I didn't know it hadn't cleared. As far as I knew, they've got the money. And then KKB came to me like, say like, don't pay for Hellebrus. They're like we've sold it to one of the UK vendor. I'm like, what do you mean? I paid for it like a month ago. I'm like, no, 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 we never got the money. I'm like, thank you for telling me. So it's not it's not Serpent Keys' fault. Like you can go buy it from Serpent Keys and Ollie's great guy. Um, but yeah, like it was really frustrating because they could have just said, oh Jay, what's going on with this? Have you actually paid this yet? Where have you got the bank details? And I'd have gone, oh yeah, here they are. And they'd have gone, oh, 
yeah. Anyway, it turns out when I did some investigation that the last three payments I'd sent to them, their bank was holding to one side and wasn't paying into their account. So, yeah, now we're in the process of trying to fix all that palaver, which is a right mess. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Okay. We'll get there. <laughs> it's mental. Um, yeah, it's it's frustrating to me because like that's you know a few thousand pounds that I could have used for it and now I can't. Um, like I could have used for something and now I can't until I get it back. Um, so it's just a wasted investment. Of course, the banking fees and everything else, but it is what it is. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, you've been waiting for that set. Yeah, it, like, it's so frustrating, JQ. Like, but anyway, um, you'd be able to pick it up from Serpent Keys, and I encourage you to go and buy it from Serpent Keys uh, because it's not. They didn't know. They weren't aware. They just got offered an opportunity and they bought something. So, yeah. Yeah, still a reminder, exactly, this is what I said to them. I haven't seen if they replied yet, but I was like, dude, you could have just said, you know, where's this payment, Jay? And I'd have gone, oh, look, here we sent it on this date. Here's the bank records. And they'd have gone, oh, I'll reach out to my bank. And it would have been fine. Uh, instead, no, I'd spend two hours on the phone to Wise, and it is what it is. Anyway, right, here we go, guys. Uh, I am going to have to finish the stream because it's like half past four and I need to get off, but here we go. This is the keyboard ready for soldering on Sunday. The switch is the... Um, uh, the oil kings are all installed in the plate and we've got the stabilizers on there as well everything's looking good and neat and even uh, i'll check for bent pins and then we'll build the keyboard uh on sunday and we'll get the soldering done so thank you very much for watching guys i appreciate you all i hope you're all doing really well bring my own cars nice yeah um i'm so happy with this so far it looks like it's going to be a great build uh i think this makes it slightly worse is that they told me i could be the uk vendor for it around six months ago yeah, I, I, I don't know when we... Hey, Ali, I, like, yeah, I absolutely encourage people to go buy it from you because it's so frustrating. Um, I'm not frustrated at you. I'm just frustrated at KKB. Um, yeah, so please don't don't feel like that. I'm frustrated at you, Ali, because I'm, I'm absolutely not. And people should go and support you and buy the set from you. Um, so, yeah. So, it's just one of those situations. And it's really, really frustrated me. Um, but it is what it is. It is what it is. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. Um, we'll be back on stream on Sunday and thank you for being patient with me because the stream is delayed today uh, I'm going to take some time off for this afternoon and go take one of the cars out for a drive and I'll see you all on Sunday uh, Come and chat on discord come and chat on Instagram wherever else you want to see me um, Ask any questions and post any chat and go buy some coffee from Jay's Roastery because it's great. and I love it Thanks very much for watching guys. I love you all. Bye. Bye